And gentlemen, William Barr is going to testify in just a couple of hours. He's not, he's not meant, it's not a testimony that's supposed to be for the Mueller report, but I'll read you. Democrats plan to use hearing to press Barr on Mueller report. House Democrats plan to question Attorney General William Barr about his handling of the special counsel Robert Mueller's final report when he appears before an appropriations subcommittee. Tuesday mornings, just a couple of hours from now. The hearing is ostensibly to focus on the Justice Department's budget, but it'll be the first, it will be Barr's first public appearance since crafting a four page summary of Mueller's findings. Members of Mueller's team who were reportedly frustrated with the summary, well, who cares? They had a chance to find legal statutes that President Trump or Donald Trump Jr. or anyone else broke. They couldn't find legal statutes. The, 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 the Mueller probe ended with no further indictments. Case closed. The whole thing was started from a steel dossier that was purchased by Madam Cyberhack. And a third-party tech firm that was outsourced by Democrats. Trump had to deal. Could you imagine if the tables were turned? They don't even want to make the, the necessary correlations or connecting of the dots between money flowing into the Clinton Foundation and 20% of U.S. uranium capacity being sold to Vladimir Putin, along with everything else, the UBS, Boeing, uh, the, the uh, $10 billion raised for the people of Haiti, 85 donors giving $156 million in meeting Clinton. You can't raise... Look, with UBS, they helped out... U Hillary Clinton helped out UBS with the IRS... Big time. And then, miraculously, what a coinky dink, Bill Clinton got a $1.2 million speak, $1.2, $1.5 million speaking fee. We already know from the emails that there, that Bill, uh, Bill Clinton utilized his, um, his contacts for 500 conflicts of interest. There was a Bill Clinton, Inc. But anyway, you, you can't connect the dots with Clintons. You just can't. Like, oh, yeah, there's no, not a shred of evidence. Meanwhile, they're trying, they're using literal news that is completely bogus, that is actually purchased to deceive FISA judges, all of these things. Democrats plan to lean heavily into Barr's decision making and crafting the summary. It's it's interesting because they when they don't get what they want. They their appeal to authority dissolves into wait a second. We have to we have to find out what's really going on. With James Comey with an overt cover up, they're like, well, you know, everything was above board. You have nothing to worry about because it was completely above board. And they covered up Clinton's crimes fair and square. You can't revisit it. And if you revisit it, you're going against. Um, you you are absolutely going against your. Um, political opponents, and you're a tyrant. And if you don't, and if it's if it's bars, oh, we have to, we have to really, really investigate this. So they are playing a game that they can't win because they change the rules all the time. At a certain point, most Americans, especially independents, and the need to win independence are going to realize that, hey, why should I vote? Why should I vote for Hillary Clinton? Or Because she's running again in 2020. Why should I, and she'll win the, she'll win slash cheat the nomination, obviously. But why should I vote for the Democratic Party or a Democrat in the White House when the economy is good, foreign policy is good, Trump is objectively a very good president. The media meltdown doesn't mean that Trump is a bad president. But the game that these Dem the Democratic Party plays is that they change the rules every two seconds if they don't get what they want. If they don't get what they want, they change the rules. If they don't get the what they want, it's like there's a big, huge problem. They Or they spend two years, and then they, then they go, well, there's 34 indictments. Well, okay. But, you see, those indictments have nothing to do with Trump. Sorry. Um, when people get indicted, when people get, get criminally charged, Comey, Strzok, McKay, Brennan, a, a whole bunch of other people, this week, this week, 
you're going to see eventual people get charged with with crimes, indicted, uh, sorry, criminal referral this week, and it'll have directly to do with Clinton's overt uh, behavior related to overt criminality. And that's and that's the thing with with Madam Cyberhack. It all stems from her behavior and people who worked overtime. It's like no good deed goes unpunished helping Madam Cyberhack. No good deed goes unpu- unpunished. But, quote, in extremely quick fashion, you turned a 300-plus page report into a four-page letter. Yeah, you can do that. That supposedly summarized the findings. Democrat uh, chairman of, the, of, of Commerce Justice, uh, Representative Serrano, the Justice uh, Chairman of the Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies Subcommittee will saying will be saying this opening statement. Quote, the American people have been left with many unanswered questions. No, Democrats have. Because they didn't get what they wanted. Serious concerns about the process by which you formulated your letter. No. <laughs> now they're like, hey, you know what? William Barr's reading comprehension is really bad. You don't see Robert Mueller, you know, saying... You, you don't see him saying, hey, wait a second, we actually wanted to indict this person. Or they, di- You don't see Mueller's team, they're like, well, they're unhappy. Well, they're unhappy because they were hardcore partisan Democrats. That's what they did. They, they spent two years trying to undermine the presidency, and they got millions, and they got journalists, they got millions of, of Democrats, liberals, progressives, they got everyone on the left believing that no matter what, he did collude with Russia. They were successful. Even though to the average American, they were obviously, they it was an, an obvious failure. It was yet another failure. They were successful in deceiving enough people. They were de- successful in deceiving enough people to muddy the waters. So when, when, when actual criminals get indicted that have to do directly with fabricating all of this, in order to cover up Clinton's crimes completely, which will never be covered up because we're still talking about Clinton's, Clinton's email servers with top secret and special access program intelligence. When the, when the tables are officially turned, they'll say, oh my God, he is a tyrant and he's going after his political opponents. Well, that's what they did. That's actually what they did. That's what they did to Trump. They went after Trump with a steel dossier. They went after Trump with a steel dossier and, you know, they knew it was nonsense. They had nothing. But anyway, let's continue. Well, before we continue, I want to. <laughs> so they're going to they're going to um, they're going to basically treat it like a a pre Mueller testimony, and he's going to just eviscerate them because it'll be like um, Democrats will be like petulant middle schoolers trying to. Um, trying to undermine a 50-year tenured professor who is who knows far more about the procedures of the justice department and who actually will just fall back on the on the on the, the reality there was no evidence there to begin with which will in turn make democrats look silly which is what they're fantastic at doing to themselves but this is gomer you have to, you know, I was like, gosh, you know, what am I going to give my viewers? I'm going to give them a little treat tonight. This is fantastic. And this is exactly why Democrats can't win this year or in 2020 or in any attempt at trying to utilize Russia Gate or cover up Clinton's actual criminality. Check it out. We're going to an address that was not on the distribution list. Oh, hold on it one second. Going to this community, Inspector General Chuck McCulloch 
having an investigation into an anomaly found on Hillary Clinton's emails? I do not. Well, let me reflect, refresh your recollection. The intelligence community, Inspector General Chuck McCulloch, sent his investigator, Frank Rucker, we've got it. We've, we've got it. along with an ICIG attorney, Jeanette McMillan, to brief you and Dean Chappelle. Clinton's emails were already compromised. It's absurd to think that the whole planet didn't. But we already know that her emails were compromised by Inspector General Charles McAuliffe and Louis Gomer. Charles McAuliffe stated that um, a company linked to the Chinese government already hacked Clinton's emails. So, but it was unencrypted for, her servers were unencrypted for five and a half months. They eventually contained top secret and special access program intelligence. She used Microsoft Exchange software to run her servers. Why wouldn't the world hack into her servers? And that's yet another thing that they're guilty of. When they project, when they say, oh my God, you're talking about the most monumental mess up. And that's, you know, I could use a different phrase. The most monumental mess up. And just replace the word mess with something else. In American history regarding, regarding, cybersecurity or just regarding keeping secrets. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is beyond out of control, but let's continue. And two other FBI personnel that I won't name at this time about an anomaly they had found on Hillary Clinton's emails that were going to and from the private unauthorized server that you were supposed to be investigating. Now, do you remember it? I remember meeting Mr. Rucker on either one or two occasions. I do not remember the specific content or discussions. Well, I'll help you with that, that too, then. Mr. Rucker reported to... This guy is uh, this Peter Strzok, obviously. He is so... He's lying through his teeth. But let's just continue. Those of you, the four of you there, in the presence of the IC, IG attorney, that they had found this anomaly on Hillary Clinton's emails going through a private server. And when they had done the forensic analysis, they found that her emails, every single one except for four, over 30,000 of them, were going to an address that was not on the distribution list. It was a compartmentalized bit of information that was sending it. Could you imagine? Could you imagine what they would do to Trump if he had servers where every single one of his emails were actually being siphoned away by another by a foreign adversary? To an unauthorized source. Do you recall that? Sir, I don't. Sir, I don't, because I was busy conspiring with my homies, Comey and McCabe. I mean, and there's also top secret and special access program intelligence as well, but let's continue. Well, he went on to explain it, and, and you didn't say anything. No. You thanked him, you shook his hand. The best part is Nadler's behind him. So if you, if you remember... If you remember my my live streams, and I'll have eventually more of them, but this is just the best. But the problem was that it was going to an unauthorized source that was a foreign entity unrelated to Russia. And from what you've said here, you did nothing more than nod and shake the man's hand when you didn't seem to be all that concerned about our national integrity of our election when it was involving Hillary Clinton. So the forensic examination was done by the ICIG, and they can document that, but you were given that information and you did nothing with it. And one of the things I found most egregious 
with Mr. Horowitz's testimony. And by the way, Horowitz got a call four times by someone wanting to brief him, leaving messages telling him about this, and he never returned the call. He had 500 pages of bias that he gave us, and then he threw a bone to the Democrats and said, but we can't find bias. And let me tell you, when you have text messages, Mr. Strzok, the way you do, saying the things you did, you'd been better off coming in here and say, look, that was my bias. And you kind of get around to that a little bit when you say, hey, uh, you know, everybody's got political views. Those are the political views that he's talking about, first of all, it's not a political view. You're actually, you're actually stating your guilt, or you're you're admitting, you're admitting the um, intent to conspire. When you have all of these anomalies, when you have all of these bizarre things taking place, you delete five references to gross negligence, which would have tied Clinton to U.S. Code 793F. You simply disregard the fact that classified information is found on um, Uma Abedin's laptop. Oh, well, they wrote a letter. Yeah, that's that would have been grounds anyone else would have been charged with a crime right then and there. You have all of these anomalies taking place. You have the benefit of the doubt given. They were bending over backwards. The benefit of the doubt. Oh, my God. And with, with Trump, it's like we know something's happening. We just We just... We know, we just know, and they're, they have no problem with their leaps of logic regarding Trump because of a steel dossier purchased by Clinton. That's complete and utter nonsense. But with all of this going on, you have Strzok, McCabe, Comey, a whole bunch of other people. They're like, oh, well, you know, we, we're going to get away with everything. And this week is one of the, one of the there will be one of, the weeks of reckoning regarding all of this. You'll have William Barr formally given a criminal referral based on all the the deception to Congress under oath, the um, contradictions, because you have Lisa Page, you have Andrew McCabe, you have James Comey, you have Brennan, you have a whole bunch of people, all a whole bunch of people contradicting one another. And you have suspicious, you want to talk about suspicion, this is overt and you have political uh, will. And you have things that just, you know, like, let's continue. You have people lying to FISA judges. You can't do that. That is an overt criminal act. To call biases, and we all have them, and you have come in here and said, I have no bias. And you do it with a straight face. And I watched you in the, in the private testimony you gave. And I told some of the other guys, he is really good. He's lying. He knows. We know he's lying. And he could probably pass a polygraph. Point. It's amazing. Mr. Point. Chairman. No, this is my Mr. Time. Chairman, I'm sorry. I need to point be of order. This point of order. Point of order. No. The general state is point of order. A member of this committee just asserted that this witness who is under oath and a former agent of the FBI lied. There is no evidence of that. I ask him to withdraw it. There's all. <laughs> there's, there's so much evidence. Withdraw it. I do not withdraw it. He is not a member of Congress. It's not a violation of the rule. And just as you have been expressing bias through your members about what a hero... There is not a single person on this committee who has ever characterized a witness gentleman that Gentleman from Rhode Island. Here, here gentleman here before my time. That's a just Gentleman from Rhode Island will suspend. Him. No, the disgrace Mr. is Mr. what this man has done. The gentleman from justice. Texas will suspend for a there moment. There is the disgrace. And it won't be recaptured anytime soon because of the damage you've done to the justice system. And I've talked to FBI agents around the country. You've embarrassed them. You've embarrassed yourself. And I can't help but wonder, when I see you looking there with a little smirk, how many times did you look so innocent <laughs> into your wife's eye and lie to her oh, about Lisa oh, Mr. Hey, Chairman, this is outrageous. The credibility of a witness <laughs> Shame is always on you, an Mr. issue. Mr. And you Chairman, please. Have you Mr. Know, Chairman, this is intolerable. Harassment of the witness. What's wrong with that? You need your medication. <laughs> the gentleman controls. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what it comes down to. Um, 
they're going to all need their medication very soon because this Trump this this Trump Russia delusion uh this this Trump Russia flu um it's it's reaching peak irrationality and like I said William Barr is going to be given criminal referrals and they're not doing themselves any favors by trying to um undermine William Barr tomorrow but he'll see the extent He'll see the extent of the delusion tomorrow, which actually benefits all of us. People will be indicted eventually. First, the criminal charges. This week is going to be a big, huge week. You saw just now, you heard just now, I should say, Clinton's server was hacked. They didn't care. (laughs) That was with Special Access Program and and Top Secret Intelligence. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. William Barr will be testifying tomorrow, and it's going to be hilarious. Thank you so very much.